So a couple years ago, I threw together this hexagon cutting jig because I wanted a consistent and accurate way to cut repeatable hexagons. I then used this jig to make these epoxy hexagon coasters and subsequently this mid-century hexagon face nightstand. Now this jig is great, it's super easy to make and gives you really consistent results. The only issue is that it isn't adjustable, so you can only cut hexagons one size. So my goal today is to upgrade this jig and make an adjustable version so you can cut hexagons any size, big or small. But before getting into that, let me first show you how this one works and then we'll move on to the adjustable one. So this jig is made to cut a hexagon this size. So you'll first start with a blank. That's just about the same width as the hexagon, a little wider. And then remove the toggle clamp to remove this piece. And this is just so you can get that first cut. All right, so line up the blank on this small backstop, which could have been longer, but line it up there. And then we'll make our first cut. All right, we can put this piece aside for now and replace the little backstop here, clamp that down, and this will give us the perfect cradle to cut our hexagon. All right, let's make our next cut. And then I just rotate as I go, making sure that the blank is properly seated against both backstops. And there you have it, a perfect hexagon that matches exactly with this one, same size. All right, with the first one cut, you can grab the blank from before and just flip it over and start cutting away. All right, so to make the new jig, I'll start by making the base of the sled using a three quarter inch piece of plywood and these plastic runners. Now you can make your own runners out of wood. I really like to use these ones because not only are they a perfect fit for a three quarter inch slot, they slide super smoothly, there's no slop, and unlike wood, they won't move with the seasons, with humidity, they'll pretty much always stay like this so they won't catch or, or be too loose after a while. Now I'll leave a link to these and all the tools I use uh, in this video in the links down below. So I'll start by cutting the runners on the miter saw to size. Now they don't have to be quite as long as the sled, so I'm gonna cut them just a tad shorter. And make sure to keep the off cuts for later because we'll be using them too. All right, so to install the runners, I'm going to use a few Canadian nickels just to raise them up so they're higher than the table and so they will stick to my piece of plywood with a few dabs of crazy glue. Now I'm gonna use the fence just to line it up. It's not necessary, but it makes it look a little more straight. And then hold that down for 30 seconds. All right, let's pull it up. Looks stuck on and now let's go screw them in. Now I can just make some countersunk holes and secure it with screws. There we go, the head is underneath the surface and just don't over tighten so that it won't expand either and be too tight in the slot. All right, let's go try this out. With a little paste wax, this seems just about perfect. All right, so next I'm going to cut the kerf down the middle, but I don't wanna go all the way through. I'm going to stop where this backstop will be positioned and I know that it'll be at about 60 degrees so I'm just going to use this little angle gauge to roughly position it. it doesn't have to be exact okay right about there so I can just mark approximately where I could I should stop cutting the curve line all right let's make the cut All right, next it's time to position the back rail and this is probably the most critical step. You really have to get the angle here perfectly accurate. Now sure, you could use your angle gauge and try and do it, but you'll likely be off even if it's just a fraction of a degree which will throw everything off. So I'm gonna show you a different method to try and get this as perfect as possible. All right, so you wanna grab your miter gauge, either like this, the one for the table saw, or use your miter saw and we're going to set it to 30 degrees. 
like that. Then grab a scrap piece of wood and we're going to make the cut. All right, so now you're going to flip over this piece, put them together like this, line up the joints. Now, ideally what you want to do is go to a tile store and get yourself a sample. Usually you can buy or they'll give you one sample of a hexagon tile. Try and find the biggest one you can find and line it up like this. Line up the corner, line up the sides, make sure these pieces of wood are connected. And what you should find is that all of the edges should line up perfectly flush, perfectly. If they're not, you'll need to adjust your miter gauge just slightly until you get this perfect 120 degree angle. All right, so once you've got these pieces, hang on to them. We're gonna use these two pieces for our jig and don't adjust your miter gauge. Keep that angle because we're gonna need it later too. All right, so like I said, this is the most critical part. I've got these two pieces that I just cut and my backstop that I've shaped and added just a slight chamfer underneath so sawdust will have somewhere to go. So what I'm gonna do is butt these up against the blade, against the teeth, and butt this up against that. And then make sure I'm squeezing everything tightly, mostly making sure this is against the blade and then the backstop is up against that. All right, so once I'm satisfied, I'm just gonna nail this into place temporarily using very short brad nail so I don't go through into my table, and then I'll test it out again. Once I'm satisfied, I'll screw everything down. All right, so I can double check using again my tile here. If I butt it up against the fence and the blade, is it perfectly square or not? Is there any movement? And right now it's looking pretty darn good. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down. Making sure nothing's moved. All right. All right, with that done, next comes the fun part. I'm going to install a sliding stop along the back fence. Whether you wanna cut really small hexagons, you can slide it in, or if you wanna cut something much bigger like this, you'll be able to adjust and cut any size you want. Now this sliding stop will be on a T-track and will be very similar to the uh, stop block I made for my miter saw station. And if you're interested, I'll have plans for this build, just like I do for the miter saw station. I'll leave links down below if you wanna check those out. All right, so I've got this T-track here and the idea is to embed it into the table flush with the surface so that my stop block can ride along the track. For this, I'll use a three quarter inch straight bit, which is the same width as my track. And I'll go three eighths deep, making two passes, riding along the back fence here to make sure that it's parallel with that. I cut the track to size on the miter saw, taking it nice and slowly. I could then secure it using a few dabs of Gorilla Glue and using this dowel to clamp it and let it dry for a few hours. While that's curing, we can move on to making the stop block. So for the adjustable stop, I'm going to use this leftover piece of ash that I have. Now it's a lot bigger than I need it, but it'll be easier to work with and cut the groove that I need to embed this runner into it first, and then I'll be able to shape it and cut it to size. All right, now that I've got the dado cut and perfect fit for my runner here, it's time to shape this. And I'm going to use the same miter gauge I used before. I haven't touched the setting, so the angle should be perfect. And I've kind of traced out here how I want the stop block to be so it'll fit and make a perfect hexagon. So to cut this angle, I'll first flip it over, cut it like this, and then I'll be able to flip it back and cut my second angle here. Just as before with the back stop, I'm gonna give the inside edge of my adjustable stop a chamfer on the bottom edge, just so the sawdust has somewhere to escape to. I can then drill a hole through the dado roughly on center. I can then cut two short pieces of runner that I'll secure into the dado of the stop lock using a bit of crazy glue and making sure to leave enough room for the T-bolt. 
All right, so the T-Track has dried and the stop lock is ready. So let's give it a try. Starting with a T-bolt in the track and then I'll just slide this on top. And these should fit right into that track. And add a washer and a star knob. It's looking pretty good, so it's time to test it out. But first, there's still one thing missing, and that's a handle to help guide the sled. So let's add that quickly. And of course, no jig would be complete without adding a measuring tape. And everything should be ready to go now, so let's test it out. All right, let's start with some small hexagons. Let's say two inch size, roughly. First thing you want to do is cut the first angle here. You want to aim for about halfway through the thickness at least. So, I mean, if you want to do it over here, you'll just have more wastage. But if you want to aim for about half this way, just over that, that'll work too. All right, now with that first angle set, you can flip it around onto your stop and start making your cuts, always making sure everything is up against the back fence and the adjustable stop. And there you have it. That's number one. Let's try another one just to see if they are accurate and repeatable. All right, did I forget a side? Nope. Looking pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, let's try something a little bigger. All right, now I can flip this over, I think. Install the stop block back into place. Set it to nine inches. <laughs> like a charm. Woo. All right, so that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this build. And if you're interested, I'll have plans available for this build and I'll leave a link down in the description below. And I also wanted to do a shout out and ask you guys for your opinion. I'll soon be launching my Patreon community page and I wanted to hear from you what kind of benefits you'd be interested in having. Uh, what kind of, you know, little goodies do you want? Merch, do you want one-on-one -on -one chat? Do you want me to answer questions? Any type of benefit you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think, so let me know. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.